on. I don't want to go on. But he also wanted to talk radio ended. I may as well read this to you to show you who the liberals really are. They're fascists through and through. They're self-haters through and through. And they're very, very dangerous for our survival. And Hillary Clinton is surrounded by them. This nut of Blumenthal, little Blumenthal, noted that while sitting on a panel at Tilburg University, he responded to a question about American media corporations and elections. And here's what he said, quote, Riemann asked me if the United States was a democracy given the rapidly rising influence of corporations over the media and elections. After two panelists had described Israel as a vibrant democracy, while another labeled Italy a non-democratic quasi-dictatorship, this is Blumenthal's son, I decided that our definition of democracy was subjective at best. So I sidestepped the question and outlined a few of the greatest blows to American democracy, listen now, from the elimination of the Fairness Doctrine to the Telecommunications, Telecommunications Deregulation Act of the Citizens United SCOTUS decision. So this low-life leftist fool thinks that if they eliminated talk radio, it would be a better nation. Now, those of you who listen to me who don't agree with me, I want to ask you something. Do you think it would be a better nation if opposition voices like my own were not heard from? Do you really want to live in a country where there's only one position permitted? to be disseminated? You want to live in North Korea? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll buy you a one-way ticket to North Korea if that's where you'd like to live. But I don't want to live in North Korea, do you? Why would you want voices of opposition eliminated unless you yourself are so weak-minded that you can't take an opposition viewpoint because there's no way to argue with it? Maybe I'm right and you're wrong. Hmm? Here's another one, Economics 101, after raising minimum wage, Walmart cuts workers' hours. So you liberals, you don't understand the unintended consequences of your do-goodness. And this explains, of course, another aspect of the, the, the decline of America. Daily pot smoking on college campuses at 35-year high. Take a look at the morons with their hats on backwards, wearing sunglasses, thinking they're oh so cool, smoking pot on campus. And you wonder why we can't produce enough engineers of our own. You wonder why we can only produce artists, so-called artists, like a local high school here in Marin County that a number of years ago I roundly condemned. They took millions of dollars in funds that were raised from the community in Marin County to build not a new science lab, not a new tech lab, not a new IT lab, but a theater so the boys could jump around in tights at the pleasure of the drama coaches that's america a future of actors and actresses this is the savage nation i'll be right back join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage my savage nation is sponsored by swissamerica.com it's the only company i trust to protect my wealth call 800 b-u-y-c-o-i-n it is the Savage Nation. And, of course, there's the baby body parts brokers at Planned Parenthood. In my opinion, a Nazi organization. I say that because how, who would you compare them to? Who would you compare these ladies of the night who are lower than the lowest on the planet in dealing with baby body parts? Can anyone answer that question? When you see these vermin selling intact fetuses, when you see them listing prices for fetal cadaverous specimen procurement, second trimester specimen, 13 to 24 weeks per specimen, $340. First trimester specimen, 8 to 12 weeks, $550. Blood specimen procurement. If it doesn't turn your stomach, then you have no soul. If you think Planned Parenthood is about women's health, then you're a brainwashed fool. It's about fascism of the worst order. And you know, I always hear liberals that used to say, oh, a just society takes care of its most vulnerable. Remember that? That was popular in the 80s. Every time they try to defuse a conservative argument, they say, oh, a, a, a just society always, always takes care of its, uh, its most vulnerable communities. Could anyone explain a community more vulnerable than the unborn? Can anyone listening to this show tell me that you actually support infanticide? Can anyone listening to this show tell me that that's about women's health? Well, I tell you, I don't see it that way. 
First of all, it's illegal to profit from the sale of baby parts. And as far as I'm concerned, all of them should be put in prison. Every one of them should be in prison for murder, for homicide. Planned parenthood is planned infanticide, in my opinion. And it's a darn shame that we have no party called Republicans to do so. The Twisted Sisters, the drunks and the grifters in the Republican Party who are supporting Planned Parenthood are the same drunks and, and grifters who are trying to take down Donald Trump. I don't want to even talk about the video. One video shows a Planned Parenthood executive worried about being lowballed in the sale of the body parts of aborted babies. She also joked that she wanted a, I want a Lamborghini. I want a Lamborghini. And tell me what California is doing. The evil, evil, evil state of California under the most evil imaginable group of demonic left-wing fanatics. The attorney general of the state of California is not going after the Nazis and Planned Parenthood. They're going after the, vil the filmmakers for violating the rights of the fascists who are doing this to the infant, to the, to the fetuses. That's right. The Attorney General, Kamala Harris, who was appointed by none other than the sterling, respectable Willie Brown. That's right. That's the Attorney General of the once great state of California. 855-400-7282. Marshall hates me, says we'd be better off without you. Marshall, go ahead. I know you hate me, but you're on my show, so what do you listen for? Michael, um, I just recently started listening. Uh, oh, that's so wonderful. You've made my day. I'm glad that I... So if you don't like me, why do you listen? To understand why you say the things you do or try to understand. Are you a psychiatrist? No, but I, I'll tell you why I think we... I don't hate you, first of all. Again, well, no, you're too, you're too liberal to hate anyone. I get that. It's an extreme statement that I object to that you do so much. Yeah, uh, no, no, you're an, you're an extremely good man, so you could never admit that you hate anyone, but you called to say that we'd be better off without me. Tell me why. Well, I don't hate you, and I object to your generalization, and I think that's one reason why... So, you like the, so let me ask you, you like the generalizations of Barack Obama, who says that all cops are picking on minorities? Or that all of the glaciers are melting because of man caused global warming. What about those generalizations? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. Welcome back. To the Savage Nation, uh, I had disclosed that Sid Blumenthal, a top advisor to Hillary Clinton, has a crazy liberal son named Max, who is a self-hating Jew, who hates Israel, and, and has advised Hillary of his hatred of Israel with missives. And in the midst of all these missives against Israel by Blumenthal's son, there was a lament that America lost its democracy primarily because of things such as the, the end of the Fairness Doctrine, which permitted shows like mine to emerge. And so I challenged the audience to call the show and say, do you really want to live in a country where there are no opposition opinions? Do you really want to live in a nation where there's only one position on everything, such as the crap you hear on NPR or on ABC, CBS, NBC, whatever? That's what you want to live in with no alternate viewpoints? So a caller called from liberal uh, Fort Lauderdale area, and he said, yes, we'd be better off without you, but unfortunately we lost him. I don't know where he is. I haven't any idea how a person can consider themselves a liberal and not want to expose themselves to opposition viewpoints. Now, he did say, I don't like your overgeneralizations, and I answered him, and I said, you mean you like the overgeneralizations of the left, such as Obama, with a broad brush saying all police are racists or that man is destroying the planet. I mean, this is what you like? That's your idea of fairness? I mean, who would counter the liar in the White House? Who would counter the liars of the left if it wasn't for those on the right who are smart enough to take their arguments apart? Let me give you an example, all you good liberals out there. Just came out of Wisconsin. City Hall vows to end homeless washing underwear and water fountains and defecating on walls. The progressive enablers of Madison, Wisconsin have just about had it with a group they just made a protected class, the homeless. Vagrants have turned the city-county building into a commune. Right now, uh, it's not a safe place. People are getting in fights. 
alcohol, illegal drug use, crapping in the fountain. This is what goes on in San Francisco, which leads me to the next point. I, I spent two shows last week on San Francisco's debasement under the liberal regime that runs it. And this morning, I was listening to the morning show on KSFO, my local radio station amongst the several hundred that I am on. And I heard a mention by the host who fills in for me quite often that people are fleeing California from an article. Five million people left the state over the last few years, replaced primarily by illegal aliens. So taxpayers are running out of California. And then the article concludes in the Washington Times where they don't know why they're leaving. So I thought that was funny. And so I called the show and gave my opinions on why people are fleeing uh, California. And Jim, if you have that one ready, I believe that's clip one. Would you play it, please? Always love it when this happens. Of course, he's the guy that we've all been listening to on this station since the station went conservative in the 90s. And that is Dr. Michael Savage starts on KSFO and now he's basically worldwide. He has the, the largest streaming audience of any talk show in the world. That is Dr. Michael Savage. He joins us live right now. Michael, good morning. How are you? Well, I was listening to you talk about why five million people fled California and I had to call because, I mean, I think I understand this better than anybody and I thought you may want my opinion. The reason people are fleeing California is because they don't appreciate the natural scent of human feces and urine in sophisticated San Francisco. You see, that's an acquired taste, Brian. And the folks who are leaving just don't have the artistic sensibilities required uh, for that. Uh, they are also mean-spirited and don't want to share another 10 to 15 percent of their income on housing, feeding, medically treating illegal aliens. Those fleeing California are homophobic and do not wish to pay for sex reassignment surgery for prisoners. Also amongst these five million, Brian, you'll find retrograde who do not appreciate the science which proves that the European American is racist, while all peoples of color, all of them, are kind, sensitive, artistic types, as taught in the public schools and colleges. And also, another reason that five million people are fleeing Jerry Brown's California is because they're Islamophobes who don't see the beauty of Islam as taught on uh, campuses under Janet Sterno, or whatever her name is, Janet Napolitano. So those are only five of the reasons. I could probably give you 50 more reasons why these people fled California, and frankly, good riddance to them. What the state needs are illegal aliens and, uh, of course, cheap labor for Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook. That's the future of California. Cheap labor for Mark Zuckerberg. Texas emerges as the top destinations for Californians fleeing the state. I was just kind of shocked when I'm reading this Washington Times story, and they said it's not entirely clear why Texas is so attractive to California migrants. Michael, you just hit it on the head. There are many reasons why people are leaving this state. Oh, it has nothing to do with taxation and a no. lack of representation. No. No, nothing to do with that. No, one, They're moving there for the weather, no doubt. If the weather <laughs> yeah. was as good in Texas as it is in California, I would have been there already. Of course, the weather's been so horrible here for the last two weeks, I may as well move to Florida. I don't understand that. Where does humidity... I'm sorry, global warming. The Pope's going to tell me that in a few weeks now. The expert on global warming. Don't you love the the ex-separation uh, of church and state that America once enjoyed, now being lectured by this bouncer from the Vatican? We are. We're being lectured by the bouncer from the Vatican. We're being lectured by the president and John Kerry yesterday up in Alaska, where the president unilaterally decides to rename Mount Whitney uh, Denali. I think that they ought to consider renaming Washington, D.C. to Obama, D.C., because look at what he's done for the nation. I mean, who's Washington, the founder of what, a racist pig nation? I mean, think about it, naming it for, the, for George Washington? Sure. No, I think they re renamed the, the nation's capital to uh, Obama, the District of Columbia. And secondly, why District of Columbia? What does that have to do with anything now? No, I think he re I, I, needs to rename most cities in America, according to his lexicon of left-wing fanaticism. You could well, rename sure, uh, Baltimore to Michelle, Maryland, things like that. I mean, you know, he's only, got, he's only got almost two years left, a year and a half. Think about all of the good things he can do in, those, in, those, in that time. I, I think the man is just beginning to become drunk on power, and I think in these uh, latter months of his presidency, we're going to see more 